Hey, welcome back to Unsigned Berlin. We're at We Create Music currently doing interviews to help out there. And I'm sat here today with Jochen Schuster. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're working now, what you're doing, projects and the like? Thanks, Sebastian. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. What do I do? I am in the music business now for many, many years already. Uh, I started off back in the days uh, at Sony Music, then I went to Universal Music. I was there for almost 20 years and ran the labels Polydor and Island Records. Mm -hmm. And since a couple of years, I have my own business now. I do artist management. I have a young artist called Levin Geiger. I do. I have. Uh, I do the baseballs, the dark tenor. So it's kind of a very uh, broad spectrum I have of artists. I do. Mm -hmm. I consult a couple of artists as well. So that's more consulting than pure management. What I do. Right. Um, a little publishing company. I started off a direct to fat, uh, fan platform called mm -hmm. Get Next, yes. which is. Uh, um, running now uh, organically very well. Um, mm -hmm. We're very happy there. You need your glasses to, okay. to hear me better. <laughs> the, the air in here is really dry. I don't know. But, yeah. So, uh, yeah, get next. Then I have a performance company, a marketing company where we help artists to do performance marketing mm -hmm. called Moverix. Um, I do that with an artist together and with a, a performance marketing expert. Mm -hmm. And then currently I'm planning to create a music hub here in Berlin, um, right. which will be a complex um, consisting out of studios, performance area, a little gastronomy, a little coffee mm -hmm. shop we're going to uh, implement there. And this is going to happen hopefully in the next one, two years. Uh, we have nice. investors for that and we already have two, three objects where we where we plan to do that. Mm -hmm. And Connected to that, we also want to have a kind of a label and a publishing kind of a facility so that we can, how do you say the Wertschöpfungskette in English? You know I'm that? I'm not sure. I know so, that. Once again? Wertschöpfungskette, it's called. I don't know. So it's kind of the, we want to give artists the opportunity from creating a song until the marketing and the promotion and the, the selling of a song. So this right. whole chain we want to offer to the artist, including studios, including live performance facilities. So this is what I'm currently planning. And I have a little team. We do a lot of productions as well. So I'm mm -hmm. building up that production team where we do more dance, techno, party productions. Yep. And um, attached to that, there's going to be that music hub. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I know, what I do. You know, you also worked on um, on The Voice and um, Germany's Got Talent. Is that also the kind of area in terms of genre that you're trying to work on for this music hub? Is it mostly pop leaning or is it reaching out into other areas? Well, it's going to be pop, let's say, as a as a topic. It will be pop, but it will be dance-orientated, EDM-orientated pop. Right. It will be guitar pop as well. It will be singer-songwriter pop. Um, I mean, generally, we're open for any kind of style. Mm -hmm. What we are not at that um, at the Music Hub, and that's a very important thing for me, is, again, I, need, I have the German word here. It's mm -hmm. called Geschmackspolizei. Um, taste, mean, taste police. Taste police. Well, uh, yeah. there is there is no genre which we don't want to uh, support. Right. So if you come from the hip-hop side, you're welcome. If you come from the Schlager side, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. If you come from the pop side, you're welcome. And the producer and the production team I have there, uh, we're kind of into almost all genres. I mean, heavy metal would probably be, well, even one of the guys, he comes from the rock side. So yeah, yeah. we can we can uh, help and support any kind of genre there. Nice. And you've been a ring for a... <coughs> For a long time um, with Sony and with Universal through sure. and with um, Polydor, what is it that you're typically looking looking for when you're looking for artists, for example, for this, for the music hub, and you're looking for artists and producers and, the, and that kind of thing? Are you looking for a portfolio or are you looking more for someone who's just, you can see they're really active in the scene or what's the kind of... What do you see and think? It depend, here it depends a bit on genre. So if we're mm -hmm. talking about this uh, tech, if we're talking about EDM stuff, here 
um, speed is often a very important thing that people are quick that you yeah. that you that you adapt a style that you adapt a moment where you have a TikTok moment or where you have some kind of social media moment you mm -hmm. can adapt it and you can immediately transform that into a song right that's something where where the the, the speed uh, uh, is a very important thing of course quality is always an important yeah. thing but mm -hmm. that's um, that is is natural i think um then it depends on how people how the producers how the songwriters how they yeah how they they are are they in into that with their heart are they into yeah. that with the soul is that really what they want or is it just a, a regular job they're doing and this is definitely something i need that spirit you need the extra vibe you need the yeah. extra mile that people want to go to to fulfill a song or to produce a record yeah how can you see how can you see that someone is quick at working like if you're looking for that speed how can you see that it's quite easy if you if you give him an idea and a couple of hours later you have oh, a layout okay. so it's from from actually interacting with them you can't yeah. see it from the yeah. work as I much i work in the studio a lot i hang out in the studios oh, i right. have an idea i'm i'm also very into this creative part like giving mm -hmm. input giving giving ideas putting them on the table and then my team then they are just like you know okay we got it we got your idea and then a couple of hours later i can get even a first layout a first chorus or something like that and then mm -hmm. from we take it from there and then let's say within 24 hours 48 hours a song is there so yeah, I also know you're involved with um, confutain, confutainment. Confutainment, yeah. Yes, working more metaverse, NFT-oriented exactly. things. Exactly. What's the goal of your work with them? Well, the thing is, uh, confutainment, the founder of confutainment is an old uh, friend of mine, a business right. friend of mine, uh, Arvid. And um, before I, I, I helped him as an executive producer for confutainment, I, I was consulting the company called Nexa. Mm -hmm. And Nexa, they are into the metaverse business. So they created avatars, they created virtual rooms. And this was something which just as a topic and as a, as a, as an, as a content really caught me. I really yeah. found that super interesting, the whole metaverse world. And to me, it's kind of an extension of the world we're in now. And it's it's kind of part of what this whole entertainment scene is going to develop to. That's mm -hmm. what I think. So then Arvid and me, we kind of had some ideas of, of creating metaverse projects and, and creating metaverse and creating avatars has become easier year by year. Mm -hmm. So when I had my first um, kind of, I, my first connections into that scene, it was still all about motion capture and it was all right. about really... A, a, a big technical setup you need to create an avatar. Mm -hmm. And now it's become so easy to be, well, not so easy, but it become much easier, call yeah. it like that, to create these avatars. And what we also do um, in our production team, we have, a, have an artist called Marmi, which is an avatar, All a right. singing avatar. We have an, an artist called Emma. It's a German singing avatar. So we, we kind of connect music entertainment into this metaverse world. And I think mm -hmm. next year when Apple comes with the, with the, with the goggles, then yeah. I think uh, we will all experience a new level of this whole metaverse business. How does that work behind the scenes when you have a digital artist that is quote unquote, not real, like it's not a person you can directly talk to in a room? Is it a team that's really focused on trying to find a sound or is it more like there's kind of someone behind it that's the creative voice and then what's the kind of behind the scenes on that well it's it's there is a real person behind it singing mm -hmm. it right and that real person has an has in his mind a a a a, um, a an a figure a person an, an avatar mm -hmm. where she thinks in the case of mommy how she should look like how she right. should act and how she kind of expresses herself as mm -hmm. an avatar. Right. So she kind of gives life to that avatar. She mm -hmm. gives the character to the avatar. Like and she actor. does that through her songs, through the lyrics, and through the through the vibe she's mm -hmm. she's passing on. Right. And then is it is she then responsible for the like being in studio sessions, making sure everything is going to be right for that? Or is it more of like a decentralized team of people there's a team there's a mm -hmm. team of of um the the creators of the avatar right that's one team and then there's of course the music team and they correspond and they they stick together 
And then, for example, of course, you say, okay, what do we need for TikTok? What kind of moves do we need? What kind of, do we have a dance move? Is it just a gesture you do? Yeah. So these kind of things, that's what we think about, what we think that works on social media, that works, connects with the people. And this is what then the graphic team um, develops. Right. And kind of moving forward to the future, including the music hub, there's a feeling, especially with people who are starting out doing production, or doing digital production, like EDM type of stuff, that mm -hmm. you don't need a high-end studio to do that. You can do it from your from your laptop. What's the idea with the Music Hub? What are you trying to pull together that provides something that you can't get from working on your laptop? Well, I think um, there's one key word to that that's called community. And mm -hmm. I think getting creative people together under one roof and having them hanging out together yeah. is something which is not really happening a lot anymore. Mm -hmm. So we have great studios in Berlin, but to me, a lot of these great studios are pure working places. People yeah. go there, do their track, do their music, and then they go home. Maybe they have a beer afterwards, but then they go home. Yeah. And we think that a lot of creativity can come out of people hanging out together. People, And it's not just for people making music, but it's also for people who sell the music, a &Rs, managers. Right. So people who are into that music business, they are all welcome there. So that's why we want to have a life space there as well. That's why we want to have that coffee bar, that kind of, you know, where you just can grab a coffee on a Sunday afternoon, come by and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is, this is the idea. And I think out of that, more music and, and, and people will be more inspired and will be more creative uh, than just sitting at home in their bedroom and be a bedroom producer. Yeah. That's a bit the idea behind it. And I mean, there are examples of that. I don't know if you know, in London, the Talyard Studios, the Kenseltown mm. Studios, those, yeah. are, those are hubs where, where creative people get together, mm -hmm. you know, exchange and, and have, have just mingle and then things happen out of that. Yeah. And, and that's what, what, what our, our goals. And we just want to have fun there as well. Mm -hmm. And in terms of finding artists with the label that might be attached or yeah. anything you're doing like that, A&R direction, do you see a big change in what people are looking for now versus um, in the early 2000s when you were signing other acts? Mm, well, I think that artists nowadays need definitely a much more... DY DNA than they had mm -hmm. like 10 years ago, 15 years or 20 years ago. Yeah. That's definitely a must. And when I work with my artists, I always tell them, try to understand the whole part of the business, not mm -hmm. just sign a contract, then relax yeah. and say, okay, the rest is happening. Mm -hmm. That's not the right way to do it. I think you as an artist, you need to be responsible for yourself, for your art, but also for the commercial side of it. Understand what is happening. Right. And this is what I'm trying to give to my artists. This is what we're going to do in that hub. Mm -hmm. And when you come to us and when you ask for support, we will ask, what do you need? Right. And if you need a writing room, you can get a writing room. If you need a distribution for your music, then we help you with the distribution. If you need a management, then we help you with the management. So mm -hmm. this is really very selective. It's not just come in there and get the whole package. You can have it, but you can also select uh, several services that we offer. And I think as a young artist or as a new artist nowadays, you need to be aware that you can, if you are clever enough, if you are willing enough, you can do a lot by yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, we experience that a lot of majors are sometimes are not giving that input anymore that they used to do yeah. because they have so much on their table. The whole business for, for a product manager or for an A&R manager has become so fragmented mm -hmm. so that there are so little bits and pieces they have to consider when they do their work. And they have so much artists and stuff and tracks on their table yeah. that they can't really take care of everything. Mm -hmm. So you as an artist, you have to be much more in the game than it used to be. Yeah. Is there something that very consistently artists are behind on compared to everything else? Like I'd imagine the music is usually pretty good and maybe the social media and stage presence, but then something maybe is lacking. Is there something that you see all the time where you're like, this is... It, this depends a bit on the culture we're, we're mm -hmm. in. Uh, in Germany, um, you often still have that feeling that earning money with your music yeah. is something we don't talk about and we feel like not comfortable to talk about. Yeah. And it's like more, 
they say in German, there's a, there's this saying that you say Luft und Liebe. Mm -hmm. you, you you rather, you know, don't earn money, don't talk about it. Yeah. In America, it's the other way around. If you earn a lot of money, the people really give you a big applause and say, you're you're cool. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a, a big check from a record company, you hold that up and say, hey, I, I got yeah. a new deal. In Germany, everybody say, oh, well, don't talk about it. So, mm -hmm. and I think this should be a, a more common sense that making music and earning money uh, goes hand in hand. Yeah. Which is a, which because it's a profession. It's what you do, and you should you should not feel uncomfortable talking about that. Talking to your fans and say, "Hey guys, I can't do." And social media definitely caused that that music came out for free. That mm -hmm. artists started to promote and post their music for nothing, yeah. for maybe a like, and a like doesn't pay the rent. Mm -hmm. You know. So this is something where I hope that artists are more aware that. Making money with their music is definitely okay, and yeah. it's not worth. It's not like be ashamed of. A large part of I feel like the the difficult part of that for artists is how do I do it? Live shows is an obvious one, but there's a there's a big moment of you really need to get to a point before you before merch is viable, um, and before renting studios and that kind of thing is viable. Is there any way out of that that you see, maybe it's through NFTs and monetizing music, so it's not free to listen to like it is now with Spotify. Yeah, well, I think it's it's um, that's one of the reasons why we um, set up Get Next, for example, which is right. a direct to fan platform where you say I have my content mm -hmm. and I sell my content to my to my fans. And the good thing is, fans are willing to pay for your content. Yep. Artists often think, oh, ich möchte meine Fans nicht melken. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard so many times. And at the end of the day, a lot of fans uh, do like to pay and give some money for content they get because yeah. it's also a, a, a way of showing respect and a showing showing um, a certain value that, that your artist has for you. Mm -hmm. And this is something where I think a lot of artists can can make money in little bits and pieces selling stuff what you do go out there promote your music and ask money for it right this is something which is really important and this can help also with a platform like get next and 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 but there are other platforms as well where you can do that where you go mm -hmm. out there where you offer a, a certain package of what you do and your fans will pay it, and it can pay half of the rent. It can mm -hmm. maybe give you some money where you can say, okay, put that into my production. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, there's crowdfunding. There's so many ways of, of, of gathering some money together for yourself and, 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 and make a living out mm -hmm. of music. As I understand it, Get Next is a similar model to Patreon. Exactly. In terms of it's a subscription. Yeah. What do you think sets it apart from Patreon? I mean, it's obviously, it's targeted at music, which is a big difference, mm -hmm. but what, in what ways is it targeted at music? It is, well, actually it is, it's, it has some differences. First of all, it's German based service mm -hmm. out in Germany. Um, so this whole thing is not an American company. Yeah. We don't grab so much data as, as uh, Patreon mm -hmm. does. So it's, it's a safer space. Definitely. Um, we don't license the music, right. um, so we are a, um, a marketplace. So the the artist uh, sells his stuff to the fan directly, and we are, are my. So the model is a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do with us, you can do the 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 subscriptions like on Patreon, but you can also do one time payment stuff. Right. So this is kind of drops. What you can do, you can do a crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. So these are different ways that you can you can um, sell your your stuff. That's kind of the main difference. We have a twenty four seven service here. We have a we have a, a personal treatment that you get mm -hmm. from us. So those are the those are the main differences. But at the end of the day, let's say the the the, the model itself is, is is a similar model. Right. Great. Right. Um, well, we're coming up on 20 minutes, which is kind of what we're going for while we're at, we create okay. music. Um, is there anything else you want to direct people towards? Maybe it could be a learning resource or it could be something you're working on, anything. Well, uh, what, what I would say is that uh, people should, uh, young musicians should not give up making music, even if we hear these, these things that Spotify doesn't, you know, you don't earn any money anymore. So people should still make music. Young people should still make music, but young people should be um, more aware of finding these little bits and pieces of, of making money with the music you do. So this is this is something which is really important. And um, 
I'm always happy with with new develops uh, de developments in the music business when when new sources where you can where you can sell your music are coming up, and yeah, just want to encourage everyone to to keep going and and, and do your thing. Great, thank you very much. Thanks people who are listening for listening. Thank you. Everything, all the links for all of the stuff we talked about will be in the description, and your contact and well, your public profile and everything will be linked there. So if you haven't find you. Thank you for coming and talk to us. Thank you very much.